Okay, so what I'm going to do here is um, run a few calculations on a um, robotic chainsaw. So here we go. So I want this thing to run for either a one foot diameter tree or a two foot diameter tree. Sorry, those aren't very round. <coughs> but with a one foot tree, I would like each of the three chunks or parts of the saw. So we're going to have a hinge here. Again, this is just kind of terrible drawing, but I want it to form, you know, more or less um, an equilateral triangle. Gosh, that's terrible, but okay. And on the two foot tree, the geometry problem is to have it um, at least form a box. So that's kind of the um, geometry. So on a one-foot tree, it forms a full triangle. On a two-foot tree, it forms a box. So um, do the math on that. And basically, what we're looking at here, you know, this is a 90. Uh, this is a 90. And in this case, these are all uh, 60s. 60. 60. So what we're looking for in this case is what is L equals what. So give me that length. Okay. The next thing we're looking for on the design is to have, if this is the um, curvature of the tree, we're going to have uh, two wheels, or uh, two axles, we'll actually have three wheels, and then as the, um, and then the, of course, the, so this is a top view, and of course the tree's going to run around, the robot's going to run around the tree in this way, and the, um, the saw blade itself will um, be here, sort of a skinny saw blade, and of course it's running in this direction, and then the branch that it's cutting off is here. So as that, as that saw blade comes up, it, it lops off the branch. From the side, from the side view, the, um, uh, it looks like this, so it's going at a slight angle up the tree. Here are the bearings blade is running in this direction. Here's the tree branch. Here's the tree trunk. And as the robot is uh, driving its way in a circular fashion around the saw, these limbs are falling off. So you've got these limbs falling off as the robot ultimately uh, climbs its way off the tree. So the question is, what's the, what's the torque in the motor? So there's going to be two sets of motor You'll have a, a motor for the drive, and you'll also here you'll have a motor for the chain. And let's let's look at those two because the the drive motor, and then also what we'll certainly need to have is some kind of you know back here on the um, rear end of the mechanism. So again, from the top here, you'll have another segment here. I don't have all of this geometry worked out. Um, but yeah, we'll have to we'll have to figure out if the, if the saw is actually running inside. I think it will have to run inside some kind of um, chunks. We'll have some kind of opening here in the bot for it to run up. You know, some kind of pivot here, and we'll also need some kind of torque, uh, torsion spring to keep this robot hugging the tree. But for now, let's look at the um, the torque on the chain. So for this motor, we'll have a, a torque on the the drive wheels, and we'll also have a torque on the chain. So how do we get the torque on the chain? Let's just look at this. So if we look at the action of cutting through an individual um, uh, limb, so as we're, as we're driving this uh, chain forward, here's the chain itself, um, as the robot is, is driving up the tree, we're going to have some uh, type of uh, force. This will be the normal force of so of cutting F N. Sorry, it's an N F N C, and then we'll also have a uh, tangential force. So the force tangential of cutting. So if we look at that, then the actual um, uh, torque 
on the motor. We'll just assume we have a single drive motor, a drive pulley on one side, and then an idler pulley on the other side. So in this case, of course, torque, this is tau m, tau m equals uh, force tangent of cutting times uh, crossed, crossed with r. And I'm thinking for this for this um, chainsaw, let's just go with a standard, you know, something on the order of uh, two inches. So the, the radius in this case, we'll just say the radius equals one inch. So this will be the radius of cutting. So, so the tau with the motor is the force of cutting crossed with the radius of cutting. So the question is, what's a reasonable um, Force that we're going to be chewing through here. In this case, I think the K, I think what we're going to probably see is that the um, so some and this is a non-conventional system where you have sort of a, a mu or a um, a um, drag coefficient between a, uh, a dynamic coefficient between the normal force and the cutting force, and just for the sake of of um, argument here. Let's just say that mu equals 1. So let's say that the normal uh, force of cutting equals the uh, tangent force of cutting. So, so mu equals 1. Just let those two guys be equal to each other. And <clears throat> I'm thinking, and again this is just kind of a, a, an estimation, but something on the order of um, I'm just going to go with 10 pounds. It's just it's just kind of an easy number. You know, think of yourself, you know, cutting through a um, uh, you know with, with with a chainsaw, something on the order of five to 10 pounds. So yeah, um, let's just go with that. So let's just say F T C equals uh, 10 L B S. And then the uh, radius there is one inch, so the torque, uh, torque of the motor equals um, ten uh, l ten pound inches. Ten pound inches, yeah, that's, that's probably about right. And then let's just maybe uh, beef it up and say somewhere between ten to uh, to twenty. LB inches I, I think should be sufficient for that guy. And in terms of RPMs, it'd be nice to have a cutting speed of, um, let's just say on the order of maybe, maybe five feet per second, um, five feet per second, so then the, uh, so the velocity here, five feet per second, five, maybe, mm, yeah, maybe 10 feet per second. Let's go 10 uh, feet per second. And so then from there, we can need to calculate the total power. Give me a second.